Hello. How are you? This is Kay. Great to see you again on my YouTube channel. Today is the 27th of August on Sunday. So I will be doing the weekly forecast on Forex pairs and gold, leverage TI, indices, and also BTC USD. And also I will cover the fundamental news. So um, please uh, stick to it. And uh, let's see what may happen among the markets this week. Okay, so now let me switch screen and let me announce one uh, important topic, which is my social medias. Uh, regarding social medias, I do YouTube, this one, and also I have my YouTube second channel. And also I have Twitter, ForexK, and F and K as capital, and ForexK under bar notice. And for Facebook, I also have my Facebook account, ForexK, again, F and K are in capital letters, and Instagram, Forex underscore K underscore official. And all the other accounts are fake, so please be careful. I've, I have got, re got the reports that uh, there are so many like a scam, like a fake accounts of myself in social media, so please be careful. And also, I never do Telegram and TikTok. So if you see me in Telegram, then those are all fake. So also, please be careful. Okay, and the best way to reach me is by email. I never send direct messages through social medias from myself. When I get the, you know, some messages from someone, I may reply, but I also suggest to um, continue communication by email. So the best way to reach me is by email. And if you also find some fake accounts, please let me know by email. Okay, so with that said, let's start the live stream today. Okay, I see lots of comments. Thank you very much for joining today again. Good to see you. All right, Danish, Tony Gold, Costa, and Rosen, Vinicius, Levinas. All right, Blair, and James, John, BB Gaming, Christopher, Robert, and Forex, Octavio, and everyone. Good to see you. So now let me switch screen to Trading View. Okay, so since this is weekend, let me cover the weekly time frame. So first, I will cover the Forex pairs from Euro USD all the way down to Swiss franc JPY first. Okay, so let's see what's happening. So, um, so first, Euro USD. Uh, right now, so I said that this pair was bearish last week and it looks like it has been bearish initially i think i mentioned if you remember i mentioned that the market retraced to kijun sen on the weekly and it happened two weeks ago and last week the market continued bearish and now it touched the trend line the yellow trend line so from here it may go bullish it may be supported by the trend line and go bullish but I don't think the market go bullish very soon. After the market start to go bullish, I think it will be it will range. I think the market will be ranging for a couple of weeks, and then goes bullish. So in that sense, Euro USD may not be the best pair to trade. However, if the market breaks a trend line, then I think it goes down to Kumo. So I would only look for a selling opportunity on Euro USD this week. So yeah, let's see which way it goes. But for now, I think I have you know some other better pairs to trade. So I may not trade on this one. So let's see. So next one, uh, let me check Euro JPY. Okay, so here is the Euro JPY. Let me delete these lines. Um, Euro JPY has been bullish and it's almost reaching the run number 160. So, and last week was a doji 
and、uh, we have a Kumo bullish still. Kijun Sen is up bullish. Tenkan Sen is also bullish. And Chikou span above the candles. And a couple of weeks ago, there was a support by the Tenkan Sen on the weekly time frame. So to me, this is bullish. There is a chance that the market goes to the next target, again, which is the run number 160. Then it may go up to the next run numbers, which are 161 and 162, and so on. So, Euro JPY to me is bullish, so I mark purple and continue to monitor this one. Okay, next one is the Euro CAD. Euro CAD has been completely ranging Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, Tenkan Sen flat. And Chikou span is almost touching, and most likely this week Chikou span touches the candlesticks. Whenever you see Chikou span touch on the candlesticks, that means it's a range. There is no、uh, winners in buyers and sellers among the markets. So I think the market continues range until Chikou span breaks either direction. Just like before here, from Chikou span viewpoint, As soon as it touches the candlesticks, then it ranges like this. From, in terms of the candlesticks, it was this part. When Chikou Span touches candles, then the market ranges. And Chikou Span break out the bullish, then the market went up two weeks. And now it started to consolidate. So the market, if Chikou Span Touches and goes within the candlestick this week, then I think it will range. But sometimes Chikou Span will be supported by the candlesticks and goes bullish. So if that's the case, I will look for a buying opportunity. So I will continue to monitor Euro CAD closely this week. And if, if Chikou Span is being supported by the candlesticks, then I look for a buying opportunity in this way. This is a part of that Ichimoku original strategies that was introduced by the you know, original books, Chikou Span Bounce on the candlesticks. So, Euro CAD may be a good pair. So, next one is the Euro AUD. Euro AUD continuously bullish because the Kumo is bullish, Senko Span B and A are both bullish. Kijun Sen is up, Tenkan Sen is also up, and Chikou Span above candles. And it broke the resistance level of 1.6785, and now it has reached the run number of 1.7. So, this analysis remains the same from last week. My view is bullish. I think the market continues bullish until it reaches 1.8. So, 1.8 will be ultimate target. Of course, along the, way, along the way up, there must be some ups and downs, but then I think it reaches there in the long term. So, Euro AUD to me is bullish unless it breaks a Tenkan Sen. So, next week or this week, the market may be supported by 1.6785 or Tenkan Sen. And in the month of September, maybe bullish too. So that's why I continue to look for buying opportunities. And even if the market breaks the Tenkan Sen and the resistance bearish, I won't sell. I won't sell it because I think the market will be very choppy, anyways. This is where the fight between the long term buyers and short term sellers may happen. So I think it spikes and it The market can be very tricky. However, if the market continues bullish, then from long term to mid term to short term, all the traders are bullish, bull biased. So I think that will be the best scenario to follow bullish trend. So, Euro AUD, I closely monitor, so I mark purple on this one. So, next one is the Euro Pound. Euro Pound is almost breaking the support and Last week actually、uh, was supported by 0.8505 and now it went up bullish. However, this is bearish to me, still downtrend, and this week 
it may break the support. And the reason is because the Kumo is actually, uh, Kumo actually flat Kijun Sen down, Tenkan Sen down. So in the middle time frame and the short term, the market is bearish. And also the market has been resisted by the descending trend line. So I do expect the market goes bearish. But until the market breaks 0 0.8505, it may be choppy. So I think I wait for the breakout and sell. And the target will be 0 0.8341. And there will be potential pips of 160 pips to trade if it breaks bearish. So I closely monitor Euro Pound with that in mind also. Okay, so next one is the Euro Swiss franc. Euro Swiss franc is bearish. Uh, as I said, mentioned uh, last week, it has been resisted by the descending trend line, the yellow descending trend line. And Kumo is bearish. Kijun Sen Tenkan Sen are down, Chikou Span below candles. So I keep my down arrow and target is still on 0 0.9405. So I mark purple on Euro Swiss franc and continue to look for the selling opportunity. In this case, I never buy. As a trend follower, I capture trending markets and direction by Ichimoku and then follow that direction. If the market starts to go opposite direction against the major direction as per Ichimoku, then I don't take trades. So this is a uh, you know, very important rule as a trend follower myself. Okay, so that's a Euro-based pairs analysis. So now let me move on to Pound pairs. So first, Pound AUD. Pound AUD has been bullish. The market is bullish. Kumo is bullish. Uh, Senko Span A's up. Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen both bullish. And Chikou Span above the candles. And it's almost reaching uh, 2.0, the round number. And if once it breaks it, then I think the market goes up to 2.0606. And that will be uh, 727 pips of room to trade. So pound AUD remains one of the best pairs to me. So I mark purple. Last week was bearish. And this is called inside bar. We have an inside on the weekly. So once the market breaks the inside but bullish on the weekly, then I think the market goes bullish strong and fast. So you can either wait for the breakout of 2.0 and buy after that, or you buy already now and expect the market breaks that resistance and you, uh, you take the trade based on the better risk and the reward ratio in that case. For me, I don't mind buying before the breakout because I know when it breaks, that's when I get you know bigger pips, bigger profits uh, on my trades. So pound AUD is uh, bo bo bullish right now, so I closely monitor this one. Okay, next one is the pound JPY. Pound JPY is also bullish. It broke the resistance level of 184.02 two weeks ago. And last week was bearish, but still above the Tenkan Sen, Kumo is up, Kijun Sen is up, Chikou Span above candles, so it's bullish. And I think this market will be supported by, again, 184.02, which is the previous resistance, and goes bullish. This is one of the typical reversal patterns. So market was resisted here, and then went down, and being supported by the Tenkan Sen, the blue Tenkan Sen, and then broke the resistance, and then test the previous resistance level, and then goes bullish continuously. So pound JPY, I closely monitor and look for a buying opportunity. So mark purple on this one too. Okay, moving on to pound CAD. Pound CAD can be also one of the best pairs to trade because the Kumo thickness is the best among the other markets. 
Whenever I see markets, I do look at the Kumo thickness. When the Kumo thick and big like this, this means that the market is stably bullish in the long term. In the short term, it may be bearish, it may be range, but in the long term, it's bullish. So if you buy and keep holding, then I think that will be the safest trade to make some potential profits and pips. So since Kumo thickness is the best on pound CAD, and also Kijun Sen is pointing up and Chikou Span above the candles, so to me it's bullish. I think the market breaks uh, 1.7386 and continues bullish trend. So I mark purple on this one too. Okay, next one is the pound USD. Pound USD has been ranging now. This is now retracing. So in this case, I think the market goes down to 1.2472, you know, which is the um, weekly Kijun Sen. You know, whenever you see Kijun Sen flat on any time frames, that's when the market's retracing. You can capture the retracing market by the flat Kijun Sen like this. And this situation looks like exactly the one on Euro USD a couple of weeks ago. Again, if you look at the Euro USD on the weekly, same, same time frame on the weekly, uh, the market um, went down, broke the, broke the Tenkan Sen, and then it reached Kijun Sen because it was flat. So, Pound USD may be the similar case. Kijun Sen flat, the market broke the Tenkan Sen, so in the short term, it's bearish. If you see downtrend, in lower time frames, then I think sell will be the right call and target will be 1.2472, again, the weekly Kijun Sen. And the room to trade is, I think, a bit smaller. In this case, that's about, uh, oh, still, you have about 100 pips to trade. So you may be able to find some opportunities uh, Monday or Tuesday. Oh, by the way, Monday is UK holiday. so we may see less volatility among the markets, but we'll see. So the pound USD again is bearish to me. And next is the pound Swiss franc. So pound Swiss franc is not really going anywhere for the last couple of months. Ever since the last October, the market has been choppy, ranging. So no trends, no trace. So now let me move on to USD pairs. So first, USD JPY, it's bullish now. Kumo twisted bullish. Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen are both bullish. And Chikou Span above the candles. So it looks like the market is breaking 146.56. And now it's bullish. We have a room of 531 pips to trade. So I continue to look for buying opportunity on USDJPY. So I mark purple on this one and closely monitor. Okay, next one is the USDCAD. USDCAD has been bullish for the last four weeks, but in a bigger picture, it's range. So there is not really a significant, you know, opportunities. Plus the market is registered close to the resistance level of 1.3654. So the best scenario is to wait for the breakout of that level and target would be towards uh, 1.3804. So, but I think we have some other uh, better pairs to trade. So I think I take this as low priority. So next one is the USC Swiss franc. USC Swiss franc has been retracing for the last one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. And it broke the Tenkan Sen last week. So this time the market may be resisted. It may be resisted by the yellow descending trend line. But once it breaks the line, then I think go, I think it goes back up to the weekly Kijun Sen. This is the Kijun Sen retracement situation as well. So this may not be the best pair to trade. This is where, again, the fight between the long-term sellers and short-term buyers 
happening and the market t tends to be very choppy in this case so yeah i think the best of the best scenario for this one is to sell the market may be resisted by the trend line and once it started to go down follow downtrend is i think safer and you'll be able to make you know capture more pips and more profits in that scenario so yeah let's see if the market will be resisted or not okay so next one is the AUD base pairs so first AUD CAD this one is bearish Kumo down Kijun Sen down Chikou span below candles so I think the market goes down to 0 0.8599 and now the room to trade would be about 100 or 7 pips so AUD CAD can be also one of the best pairs so I mark purple and last week there was a you know long week this uh, week on the candlestick is bigger than the body part so this is kind of like a pin bar type sellers are dominant over buyers last week so I think the market continues bearish so next one is um, AUD Swiss franc AUD Swiss franc is also bearish so I mark purple too because this is I think clear to you but Kumo is down Senko span A is down, Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen both down, Chikou span below candles. And ever since on the week of the 19th of June this year, the market has been bearish. It broke the support level on the week of the 17th of July. And ever since, it has been bearish. And I think this downtrend will continue to uh, 0.5345 and the potential pips we can expect is around 300 pips so AUDC's franc can be one of the best pairs to trade also okay next one is um, AUDJPY AUDJPY has been ranging if you look at the weekly chart it's obvious that the Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat so no trends, no trades Okay, next one, AUD USD. This pair is now bearish. Like I mentioned last week, the market broke the P wave on the weekly time frame. And also it broke the support level of 0.6457 uh, two weeks ago. Last week was Doji pin bar. So the best of the best scenario now is to wait for the breakout of the previous low, which is 0.6365. And then target will be towards 0.6167. So we can have potential pips of uh, 194 to trade. So I mark purple on this one too. I think especially this P wave triangle breakout was significant. That actually made the whole market to go bearish now. So that's AUD USD. Okay, so now let me move on to CADC franc. So CADC franc has been ranging for the last three weeks for dojis near the support and looks like it's having a hard time to break the support. But once it does, I think it goes down to 0.64 and we can expect the potential pips of 76 to trade. So let's continue to monitor CAD Swiss franc and see if we can trade sell. Next one is the CADJPY. CADJPY's range also, Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, no trends, no trades. Okay, and finally, Swiss franc JPY has been bullish. Kumo is bullish, Kijun Sen is bullish, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen is all, are both bullish, and Chikou span above candles. And the previous resistance zone is in between uh, 165.63 and also uh, 166.42 and within the range of about 20 pips I think the market spikes and I think it, reach, it will reach 167 the next run number on this one 
Yeah, so let's see. Um, I will. Uh, I think this one is bullish to me in the long term. So, yeah, I guess um, I continue to monitor this one too. Okay, so that was the Swiss franc JPY. Okay, so now I think I will move on to gold analysis. But before that, let me um, drink water. So just hold on, let me show um, the chart on gold. And um, I will be right back, just hold on. Okay, now I'm ready to move on. So now let's analyze uh, XAUUSD gold. So gold has been bearish and last week it broke the support level of uh, 1892.26. But um, yeah, uh, last week it actually uh, went bullish. So now it's within the range. It went within the range and Chikou span is now closer to the candles, Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat too. So I think we cannot really trade. In the short term, it's bullish because the market has been resisted by the trend line, the yellow trend line. So it may go up to Kijun Sen or the trend line, then may continue bearish. But since it's only for the short term, I don't buy. I prefer to uh, look for the selling opportunities. Otherwise, I continue to focus in Forex trades. So gold for to me is retracing and this may not be the best timing to trade. But in the long term, in terms of the price action, it's bearish. I think the market continues bearish like this in the wave. So next one is WTI. Um, WTI has been ranging also, so the market went within the Kumo, but then it was resisted by 83.53 and now it's going down. But still within the Kumo, within the thick part of the Kumo, so I think the market will be choppy and we can't really tell whether the candlestick will be bullish or bearish this week. So now let me move on to indices. So first, Nikkei 225. Nikkei 225 is now uh, Kijun Sen retracing. Kijun Sen retracement is now happening after the market was almost reaching 34,000. Now it's going bearish. So um, yeah, I think this is bearish. Now the market broke the Tenkan Sen too, and uh, I can kind of see that there was a reverse in the wave like this. So. To me, this is downtrend bearish. Okay, next one, uh, Dow Jones. US 30 Dow Jones. I was saying that the market may be supported by the trend line and goes bullish. However, last week it broke the trend line. So now I think the market goes bearish to the Kijun Sen. So in this case, I will delete all these lines because these are all not necessary now. But then I my target will be on the weekly Kijun Sen, uh, 33,565. So for me, it's bearish. So let's see if it reaches there or not this week. Okay, next one is uh, Nasdaq. Nasdaq, it, to me, is still bullish because the price above the Kijun Sen and Kumo itself is bullish and Chikou span above candles. And now looks like, um, yeah, so the market was a bullish bar, but the long wick was resisted by 15,241. So yeah, I think this week will range. It may retrace to the trend line, 
then may bounce and goes bullish. I don't think the market goes bullish from, from this week. I think it takes the next couple weeks for this one to be bullish. But as long as price above the trend line, to me it's bullish. So that's Nasdaq. So next one is uh, S&P 500. Okay, S&P 500, this, this one is also bullish because uh, above the Kijun Sen, above the Tenkan Sen, sorry, above the Kijun Sen, above the trend line on the weekly time frame. It broke the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen flat, so it may be trace, but before the market reaches those levels, there is a previous resistance level on 43.30.1. So it may be supported by that level and goes bullish. So S&P 500 to me is bullish now. So now um, I will move on to Euro stocks. Euro stocks is now bullish. It's almost breaking that resistance, the all time high of 44,416. Uh, 44, so once it breaks it, then I think it goes up to 4,500 45, and 4,600. So yeah, Euro stocks is now near the resistance, but I think it breaks that resistance. This is now called uh, ascending P wave. The resistance levels at the same level and the lows are higher. So this is ascending P wave and most likely it breaks bullish. It's usually the case. So next is a FTSE 100. FTSE 100 has been bearish. This one is descending P wave. The support levels are the same level and the highs are getting lower and lower. So sellers dominant and I think the market breaks 7202 at any time. So next CAC France. CAC France has been ranging Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, Tenkan Sen is also flat completely and now Chikospan touching, so no trend and no trace. Um, just in terms of the candlesticks, if the market breaks the support level here of 70.55, then I think the market goes down to Kumo. So that will be the sell downtrend scenario once it happens. But uh, for now it's range, so we can't really tell which way it's going so far. Okay, so next one is, um, okay, German 40. German 40 also is now range. Uh, Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, Chikou Span is now touching. And also the market broke the trend line bearish and it has reached Kijun Sen now. So we can't really tell also whether this week candlestick will be bullish or bearish. So I will delete the trend line and come back next week. All right, next one is Nifty 50 chart. Nifty 50 is now retracing. It broke the Tenkan Sen last week and looks like now it's going down. It's going down to the Kijun Sen, uh, which is 18,413. So before the market reaches the Kijun Sen, there is also a resistance level of 18,889. So the market may be supported by one of these levels and then may go bullish. So in the short term, in the very short term, it's bearish, but in the long term, to me, it's still bullish. We just don't know how far the market continued to trace in this case. Okay, next one is um, a200. This market is also range. Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, Chikospan touching, so no trend, no trace. Okay, finally, Hansen index. Hansen broke the support last week, and now to me, it's bearish. It's bearish, so it may go down to um, 
initially here, um, 16,829. So I think I put down a row like this below the support and see how it plays out this week. Okay, so that's my analysis on indices. And now let me analyze uh, BTC USD. Okay, cryptos, Bitcoin. So I do analysis on Bitcoin, but I never trade and I never suggest anyone to trade Bitcoin because I have been only trading Forex and I don't have experience in among cryptos. So this is only my technical analysis by Ichimoku. So as I said mentioned before, looks like the market reached the weekly Kijun Sen 25,691. And last week was Doji. So this is where we have to wait for the Doji breakout, either direction. If the market breaks the Doji bullish, then I think the market will go bullish continuously for the next couple of weeks. But if the market breaks the Doji and the Kijun Sen bearish, then I think it goes down this way. But if this week kind of tick will be smaller than the Doji last week, then I think the market continues range. So uh, in this case, I don't, I can't expect, I can't forecast which way it's going. And also uh, what candlestick most likely the market will have this week. So I will simply come back next week and see how it plays out. Okay, so that's BTC USD. Okay, so now finally, uh, let me cover new website. Okay, so we all, always have to check news and see what's happening because the, the news can wipe out all these you know, technical confirmations. So whenever you see big news ahead, then never trade, come back after news is I think the safe mindset. So here is the new website and uh, let me choose this week on the week of the 27th of August. So Monday, uh, tomorrow in the morning time, there will be a retail sales in Australia. It can impact the market very wide. So watch out on this one on Monday. Tuesday 29th, we have no news, no big news. And 30th, Wednesday, we have a monthly CPI in Australia and also a CPI in Germany and ADP employment rate in, uh, US, in the US. So I think these big news you have to watch out. And also Thursday, the 31st of August, there will be a news in Germany, also retail sales. And also core CPI in Euro and US. So we have lots of big news on Thursday. So please be careful. And Friday, the September 1st, we have a news in Switzerland. Also has CPI report. And also um, in the US, there will be average hourly earnings and also under employment rate and non-farm payrolls. So I think this will be one of the biggest news. And then GDP annualized in Canada and a PMI in the US. So we have lots of big news on Friday too. So again, next week, we have lots of big news on Thursday, Friday. So please watch out. So that covered the whole topics for today. Okay, so again, uh, let me drink a cup of water. So I'll be.
thirsty today, so I may drink water at times. But、uh, <clears throat> yeah, I covered the whole topic for today. So, again, for those who join late today, let me do a recap on Forex. Forex pairs are continuously interesting. We have potential you know, big trends. First, Euro JPY is bullish to me on the weekly chart, so I continue to look for buying opportunities. And Euro AUD is also bullish. Kumo is really nice. I think it breaks the resistance and continues bullish. And Euro Swiss franc is now bearish, broke the support level, and now it's going down to the new support. And、uh, Pound AUD is also bullish. Above the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, it's reaching and breaking 2.0, a round number. And Pound JPY is also bullish. It's reaching 188.72, so it's bullish too. And Pound CAD is also bullish. Potentially, it breaks the resistance. And I think it goes bullish continuously after that. And USJPY is bullish too. It's almost breaking、um, the resistance from two weeks ago. And once it does, we can expect the potential pips of more than 500 up to 151.91. So this can be also one of the、uh, best pairs to trade, to buy. And ADCAD is bearish. It's going down. Kumo is getting thicker. So it's stably bearish. ADC s f r a n k is also bearish. Kumo has been thick and long. Long term is downtrend. And ADUSD is bearish, almost breaking the inside. And the target will be 194 pips down. And CADC s f r a n k is another downtrend pair. It's almost breaking the support. And I think the thickness of the Kumo is really nice. So, this pair is also bearish. So, lots of big trends, lots of potential big trends. Okay, so now let me cover some comments. Okay, thank you very much for joining everyone today. I hope you have a great, great weekend. Okay. Let's see. So, I have posted、uh, you know, Day in the Life video、uh, three days ago. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. And this week, I'm thinking to、uh, do one video about、um, uh, the one of the best housewife Japanese traders. So, I will introduce her strategy and her mindset in trading. So, yeah. I hope you will enjoy that video too. Her other name is a kimono trader. Kimono is like a Japanese traditional clothes. So, kimono, kimono trader was also her nickname. But、uh, I will introduce her technique too. Okay. All right. Good to see you again, everyone. Thanks for joining from lots of different places. Good to see you. Okay, account size of 400k. You show a lot of profits every month, but your account size never goes over 400k. Why not add profits back and compound? Yes, I compound my profits and I start to trade bigger amount in the month of September. So every three months, I add more money in my account. So I keep, I keep growing my account and also my profits in this way every year. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Do you have other accounts as well where you do the trades and compound? No, I don't. This is the only account I have in Forex. Okay, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Tarandeep, Jitendra, Photo, Debbie's, VIC. Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Octavio. Okay. Right, right, right.、Uh, let's see. Jalaj says, oh, sorry, I forgot to pop up that comment. Okay, there we go. Can you see comment now? No. Hold on, let me try to fix it.
Okay. Now, can you see? Okay, so Jalaj says, Hi Sensei, I was going to going through your old videos. Do you still analyze market using Kihon Suchi or Taito Suchi? Further, is the wave theory deeply discussed in your Kyushu Lex book? Yes, I do. Yes. I do analyze markets by time cycles, Kihon Suchi, Taito Suchi, and also uh, Kyushu Ashi also. Yes, I do. Yeah, Kyushu Ashi and the time cycles are other aspects of Ichimoku. But uh, on the weekly analysis, if I cover those areas, then that will be too much information. So, yeah, I don't, but I do look at the markets based on these analysis. One of the pairs, um, I think was a Euro USD. When I was doing the time cycles, now um, Friday was a Henkabi on the low. Let me just show you one of the, one of the examples. Uh, so here is um, Euro USD and these vertical lines are in time cycles and um, the previous swing low was marked on the uh, on the 3rd of August and Friday was a potential Henkabi. Henkabi means the day of change in English. So Henkabi has two meanings. One is the trend reverse. So from, from Friday, next week, it may be bullish. Especially the market is near the, near the trend line. So it may be supported by the trend line and goes up. It's possible. But if the market breaks the trend line, then it goes down continuously. So the second definition of the Henkabi is the trend, trend continuation. So I closely monitor Monday, Tuesday and see how it plays out. So that's how I use time cycles as one of the examples. Yeah, I, so I do use time cycles just to get overall picture of the markets, but every day I use my own st strategy, multiple Ichimoku time frames, and as a trend follow strategy, I use my original and take trace. Okay, Homan, Muhammad, good to see you. Thank you very much. Okay, Tim, um, I hope you're feeling better. As you said in your vlog you of your day that you felt like you can't catch breath. Oh, yes, I'm fine now. I'm fine, yes. Sometimes when I have some short sleep or, um, you know, when I'm a bit tired, I have some, uh, you know, a short breath, short breath uh, during the live stream. But um, yeah, I'm fine today. Okay, yeah, but yeah, thank you very much for the comment. Yeah, whenever I do, I speak slowly. Okay, Wong says, Yen weakness had been long and alarming. Do you think BOJ might intervene in the market soon? Uh, yeah, they may, right, they may, because USDJPY is bullish now, as per weekly chart. So, last time, BOJ intervened um, twice right here i think it was uh, on the 7th of november last year when the market reached over 150 then they intervened and also here too this uh, you know doji on the week of the 19th of september last week i think this was also when boj intervened when the market reached 146 level so this time the market is reaching above 146 so yeah, they may intervene anytime soon. And when it does, USDJPY drops so huge. And it's always un unannounced. So no one knows when it happens. So we have to be careful in that sense. Uh, but, you know, um, if you do the risk management properly, then that's fine. Make sure you put the stop loss 
and calculate the risk per trade, then you should be fine. Okay, good to see you again, everyone. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. Um, Arup says, could you please tell me, sir, why most of people trade in gold? Uh, is it? I'm not sure. I don't really know people trade gold. Most people trade gold. I don't. I prefer Forex for now. But I think uh, people trade gold to make profits quickly because gold is more volatile than Forex. Or cryptos may be more volatile than Forex. So you can, uh, you know, you may be able to uh, make, you know, big money in a short term. But on the other side, you may lose big also at the same time. Or you may keep, you may keep losing also in gold. So until we see the trending markets in gold, I think it's a bit challenge, challenging, difficult to trade in my opinion. Yeah, so I don't really trade gold. I don't remember when I traded gold last time. I, th I think it was like a couple years ago. Okay, Felix says, I have a question, which Forex broker do you use for your trades? I do use XM. XM. I have been using XM since I was in Japan and uh, that's my broker. But I usually don't suggest any brokers to use because I think the regulations are different among regions. So I always suggest everyone to do your own research on your region and choose the best broker to, tra to trade. Okay, BB Gaming, you're welcome. Yeah, let's see. Costa says, do you ever cover uh, the NDD pairs? Um, no, I don't because NDD pairs, I backtested it and my strategy didn't show, you know, good results as the pairs on my watch list. So that's why I don't analyze New Zealand pairs. But it looks like, it seems like this year, New Zealand pairs are really nice. And yes, last week, some pairs were trending in New Zealand. So I may backtest New Zealand pairs this, this year, since January. And if I find myself that my strategy works on New Zealand, then I will add those pairs on my watch list. And you will see that in my live stream. So before I add some new you know, uh, pairs, I backtest at least 100 times, 100 trays, and I have to see the result with my strategy. If I see good result, then I add. If not, then I don't. So always, you know, um, the, the pair to trade has to be based on your stats, based on your performance. Okay, you rich, you're welcome, you're welcome, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. What is your car? You will see that in my second channel. <laughs> yes. I love driving. I love driving. Uh, maybe after this, I will drive. I love Sunday night driving too, because there are less cars in town, less cars on the street. So I relax very much. Sometimes I drive to the beach or some like a 30 minutes drive and just enjoy the night. Okay, uh, let's see. Joseph says, hello, Kay. Thanks for your uh, another informative weekly forecast. Could you please recap briefly your idea behind using Bollinger Bands for making entries on lower time frames? Um, yeah, well, simply I use Bollinger Bands to, you know, uh, enter trays as one of my entry confirmations. I do use the band walking. So band walking is like when you see the price is, you know, going towards the major direction between the deviations one, two. So for example, like, um, hold on, if I just choose the good example, maybe here, this is 
when I take one of the confirmations. The price between deviations 1 and 2, this is 1, this is 2, and it's here. So when the price is between these two areas, between this area, then the market tends to go towards a major direction. So that's how I use the Bollinger Bands for my entries. And I find a couple more confirmations in addition to this and enter trace. So, yeah, Bollinger Bands is really useful. I have been using Bollinger Bands for years and I mastered Bollinger Bands. So that's why I use it. Um, and same is same true in Stochastic. You know, I used to Stochastic a lot in the past. I was using RSI and MACD, but for some reason, I prefer Stochastic. And it has been working so well with my strategy, so simply I'm using it. So, I recommend everyone to choose your favorite indicator to trade. If you have the favorite indicator, then I think you have more you have more touched to those indicators and you continue to use a master how to trade based on those confirmations. Yeah. You know, building strategy is not really easy. This strategy of mine I have tested so many times for, you know, the last almost like 10 years and I'm still fine-tuning my strategies. Sometimes I change the small part of my strategies. So if you see myself uh, like a year ago or even like half a year ago and now I'm using a bit differently because I backtest and I come, come up with some new ideas, new improvements I find, take memos, and apply some new strategies, new entries and exits. So the way I enter trades, exit trades also change over time, slightly change. I don't change the whole strategy, but I fine tune and uh, you know I improve perfect my strategies this way. So I think trading is like an art. You know, there is no goal. You have to keep training, keep you know, improving, and you have to keep going in that way. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, hello, Master K. Swiss franc JPY is that uh, tweezer top. Okay, tweezer top means, um, hold on, let me check. Swiss franc JPY. It's, um, yeah, this is now resisted by the previous resistance zone, if you, if that's what you mean. But Kumo is bullish, Kijun Sen is bullish, Tenkan Sen bullish too, Chikou span above candles. So I think it breaks that resistance level and goes bullish. This is also how I, you know, monitor trades, monitor markets by Ichimoku and also my trend follow system. So yeah, let's see. Swiss franc pairs can be very spiky in the lower time frame, so I may not enter trade on this one this week. But uh, yeah, I, I mark purple on this one too. It's bullish. Swiss franc JPY. Okay. Costa says, thank you. I made some good profit from New Zealand pairs last week. Okay, great. Great to hear that. It seems like New Zealand pairs are good also. So yeah, if you see some opportunities and if you're fa familiar with New Zealand pairs, then of course you can trade and expect some nice profits continuously. As long as you see trends, you follow. And when you see trend stops, then you stop trading also. It's very simple. Okay, Philip says, China now challenging US as a world a major economy. Don't, don't you think USCNY could be an inter interesting pair to monitor trade 
on a regular basis. Um, I think so. Yeah, UCC and CNY can be interesting, but uh, I have to backtest again. I have to backtest. And uh, in terms of the fundamentals, yes, it may be interesting. But uh, for me, um, when I backtested it, the spread was really wide and lower time frames are very choppy. So I may have to enter trades by higher time frames, like one, uh, one hour or um, let's say M30, 30 minute time frames to trade. I think five minute time frame will be too low to trade um, Chinese Wen pairs. I think. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, let me see. Oh, I see one last comment and request about Euro DKK pair. Okay, I don't think I ever checked that pair before. So let me check just as out of my curiosity and see how it looks like. Okay, okay, this one, Euro DKK. Okay, I choose forex.com. And let's see how it looks like. Okay, first of all, this is very choppy. I see so many wicks up and down, so very choppy. And in this case, I draw the resistance level here. Well, look at this Kumo. This bearish Kumo is like, you know, uh, you know, vertical. This is unusual because I think there is a big drop in the past. Let me zoom out. Oh, okay. So there was a big spike. Wow, there's a big spike on the week of the 5th of April, 2021. Yeah. So now it's bullish. In terms of Ichimoku, it's bullish because the price above Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Kumo, and Chikou span above the candles. And it looks like the market is supported by the trend line. Also, let me draw trend line like this. It's been supported by the trend line. This is now looking like a, this ascending P wave. So resistance are at the same level and lows are higher and higher. So this is a type of ascending P wave. So yeah, I see buyer as dominant and I think it breaks 7.456 area anytime soon and goes bullish. It may be supported by the trend line again, then it may break. But either way, I think it's bullish. But I think this is too choppy. So you have to have a bigger stop loss and keep holding swing trade in monthly basis. So that's my comment on this one. Okay, so yeah, I think I will finish the live stream for now. So thank you very much again for joining my live stream and thank you for supporting what I do on my YouTube. So, oh, Oli, thank you very much for that reminder. So if you like the live stream so far, please press like button before leave. That would be great. And hope to see you on the next one. So until I see you next time, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay gold. Okay, until I see you next time. Matane, thank you.